1995 murder and rape of a young Beaumont teacher. Her body found in her bathroom by her family. Beaumont police investigated, but for a quarter of a century, no one knew who killed her. Judge Wortham uh, asked us to look into uh, the unsolved homicide of Mary Catherine Edwards. Again, probably 2014, 2015 time frame. And he had been in contact with a new lab called Othram that was doing phenomenal things with DNA testing. You know, it just took a long time for both of us to be able to get the time and then myself being moved into the cold case team allowed me more time to work on that on a full-time basis. Now retired Texas Ranger Brandon Bess will tell you this was an example of a very thorough investigation by the Beaumont Police Department. They would have to rework the case from the beginning. But one thing had changed over the course of 30 years, DNA technology. In Catherine's case, that was it, talking to people, doing interviews, reading all the reports, pulling old newspaper articles, pulling you know everything that we could from that time and of course, the retesting of evidence was the biggie. It was challenging with the evidence because there were some private labs and things like that were used back in the day, but they did great chain of custody, so we were able to keep track of all those things. Bess was familiar with a DNA testing facility near Houston, Othram Labs, that has helped solve thousands of cases and is considered a first of its kind. What you get is you have this unknown person and you get like a little sonar. Scientists are able to build DNA profiles with hundreds of thousands of markers, not just 20 with the old method. Evidence was collected from Edwards's comforter and swabs from her body and then uploaded into a database where Othram is able to identify distant relationships with advanced technology. They're this far away from this person, they're this far away from this person, this far away from this person, and you can quickly start to put that person on a family tree. Scientists create a genetic sequence, in return creating an advanced DNA profile. Now detectives needed to search for their suspect again, and they would do that through genetic genealogy. And then as it evolved and recently were able to do whole genetic profiles and be able to extract very minute, specific information from the DNA. Detective Tina Llewellyn says she and her husband spent countless hours connecting the dots, starting with over 7,000 possible hits based on their profile. So this case was extremely challenging because a lot of people of Cajun descent are related to each other in more than one way. And so we would have matches, we would work that tree up, see where they matched each other. We'd work that tree out and our suspect wasn't there. Well, we'd have to say, how else are these two matches also related to each other? So if we go up another two generations, we see that they're also related to each other through this great, great grandparent. So work that tree out and then that's how we found our suspect. They went from door to door collecting DNA samples and were finally able to narrow it down to two men who fit their profile happened to run Clayton's name first and discovered the sexual assault that happened back in the early 80s. That next day I got with our records clerks and got a copy of that old report and very a lot of similarities in that case matched similarity in the Edwards case. Ohio investigators where Foreman was living at the time did what's called a trash pull from his garbage confirming he was their suspect. Detective Aaron Llewellyn and Ranger Bess flew to Ohio within days to question him for the very first time. And we found a picture of a wedding picture that she and her sister, uh, Allison, were actually in your wedding. Right. And Other than Edwards being in his wedding, Foreman denies really knowing her or knowing she had even been murdered. He said there was no reason for his DNA to be on Mary Catherine. And the only way for that to have gotten there would have been for you putting it there. Foreman told the two men he needed an attorney before walking out of the room only to be arrested and charged with murder. We wanted that confession. You always want that confession. I, I think uh, everybody would agree with that. But the way he answered the questions and how sure he was of himself, we knew that our case was solid at that point. Dozens of yeah. witness testimonies, never before seen video, pictures, 
a shocking account from Foreman's previous victim, a seven day trial, but it took less than an hour for the jury to deliberate. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of the offense of capital murder. History was made here at the Jefferson County Courthouse. Clayton Foreman will spend the rest of his life behind bars, but justice doesn't mean the pain will go away for Mary Catherine's family. Make friends with people and compliment people and just was an amazing person. In Beaumont, I'm Jay Morrow reporting. Detective Llewellyn and Ranger Bess handcuffed Foreman with the same handcuffs he used on Mary Catherine. Those we interviewed say it was a collective effort by many to solve this case, and they were happy to finally bring a killer to justice. And he's no longer here in Jefferson County. Yeah. He is up in Palestine. Okay. 64 years old. Clayton Foreman will be eligible for parole when he's 101. Mm. And he's probably not going to make it. I would imagine.